I, for various reasons, had quite a busy weekend, but I knew there was stuff uh, going in sport. I'll be honest, my knowledge of sport this weekend is the Hurricanes lost. So what I do every Monday to get up my bloke quota up, we check in with Marty and so I can look knowledgeable. We check in with Marty Devlin and Morgan so I can look knowledgeable about sport. Marty, you there, mate? Right Hello. here, mate. How you doing? Yeah, what did you get up Good. to on now, the weekend then if you weren't watching well, sport? Well, no, I was just busy. I was working stuff. I was doing strategy. I went for a, a bloody walk. I did some housework and no sport. But I did see right. on Twitter the Hurricanes lost to someone Can you, without Artie. Can you tell me, talk me through yeah, that Yeah, uh, to be honest, I mean, you picked the most boring bit of the whole thing, mate. There's so much sport to talk about, and that's way down the order, way down the list. I mean, they lost to the Blues. I mean, it's super rugby. The, the result of the round was the Fijian and Drua beating the Crusaders. Let me repeat what? that out loud. You, what? You just, you just don't get shock, surprise results in rugby. It's probably the one sport in the world where they're just so few and far between. Look, we had Japan beating South Africa at the World Cup in 2015. Uh, these kind of results really do make you sort of say, whoa, and take notice. Uh, yeah, Fiji in Lautoka, under the hot sun, beat the Crusaders. And they, they did it in style with a, a last-second penalty. Uh, you know, just take a bit of time today, people. If, if you if you if you have the time to just go and have a look at the footage of it and the reaction of that Fijian crowd afterwards, they they're the loudest. I don't know how many people were there. Probably only a few thousand. But my God, the noise! It was incredible. And then and and how do you explain that result? Because all of a sudden the Crusaders are now sitting there. They've won one out of three games. The last time they started like this was back in 1998. They did go on to win it that year. That was their first title. But all of a sudden, what can we start asking a couple of questions? I mean. Is there a coaching issue going on there? And, I mean, it's every time Ian Foster, the All Blacks loses, he wears it, doesn't he? So what are we allowed to Who cares, Marty? Questioning? I love it when people beat the Crusaders. It's just, you know, that's oh, yeah. good. I don't care who it is. And I love the and Fijians now for beating the Crusaders. And then, of course, you turn your attention up to the other part of the world where the Six Nations is going on. And, and France go to Twickenham and put 53 points on England, and that's the, the biggest defeat wow. they've ever had at home. So... Yeah, some amazing results from that. Ireland, of course, just keep being, being, being Ireland. I mean, they beat Scotland this morning and, and they're going to win that, that uh, Six Nations title and probably clean sweep the whole thing. They've got England next week. But this is an England side that, well, Steve Borthwick's taken over Mitty Jones. 53 points they shipped. 53 points, mate. So, yeah. The so French, when they're, on, the they're on, when they're on, they're on, though, aren't they, the French? Oh, there's nothing you know. like watching them pound the English croissant like that, though. That was quite glorious to see. It really was. <laughs> um, as, Where do you come up with this stuff, buddy? As far as far as as, as <laughs> petulant men behaving like yeah. brat twats go, we've had a couple of great instances this weekend. Um, the Kings coach storming out of the press conference last night after losing to the Breakers. So that's split at twos and goes to game five. And Ooh. Shane Van Vis for Shane Van Gisbergen and really tossing his lost toys after the V8s. So he Sorry? won, and then he got the, he won the race, didn't one race, and then it got taken away from him for something to do with the air cooling yeah, system. Yeah, that was on that was on Saturday. Yeah, uh, just a, a, yeah. A, a cooling system. They've 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 changed the cars around this year, as you know, Chevys and Camaros the supercars, and so uh, there's there's all kinds of cooling systems that get put into these cars to keep you know the the driver's temperature down using dry ice and all kinds of systems of pipes and tubes and things. And, and by the driver's door, there's a deliberate gap left between the driver's door and where the seat is, and they've moved it across just to provide a little bit of insurance if you get T-boned on the side so that, you yeah. know, you don't, you know, the, you know, the driver is actually protected. And what they did was they locked in another cooling system there, and apparently the rules are, I mean, it's, it's so complicated, mate, but apparently the rules are you're not allowed to put anything there, and they did. And so, therefore, the heat got they they had their they were disqualified, DQ'd out of the first uh, race, one and two spots. And then, so Van Gisbergen, brilliant second race yesterday, just absolutely superb driving from him. But then he gets out of the car and just behaves like a complete toss, uh, which. You know, I'm 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 well prepared to cut the guy some slap because you know you're driving a car around at 280k, you know we and and you, you know you get out in the moment you get out you got cameras and you got microphones thrust in your face. But these guys are normally the very best in the business at dealing with fans, at dealing with media. He goes to the press conference afterwards and just behaves like a twat as well. And so uh, that's become the major story out of supercars uh, again. You know, I mean, he's, he's you know he's actually the times that I've spoken to him, which has been many many times, has always come across to me really really well. But 
I suppose that, you know, in the heat of the moment, this is how, you know, the, the real you happens, doesn't it? And so there is a side to Shane Van Gisbergen, and, we're, and we've just seen it over the last 24 hours. Yeah. He's upset. But, you know, take it yeah. out on the people that upset you rather than the people that are actually just sitting there paying good money to actually hear from you. So um, we've also mm. got the Warriors, and the Warriors lost over the weekend, and... And, Sean, the thing about this, I mean, I've got a lot of sport to get well, through they, here, people, Oh, so hang on. I thought this was our year. I thought this was well, our year. What's happened? Yeah, it, it certainly was after week one, um, but the time <laughs> week two rolled around. <laughs> Look, the Warriors were okay, and that's okay, but it's not okay if you want to be better than just okay. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Is that an okay, okay from you? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, and that's, yeah. look, yeah, the Roosters weren't great, the Warriors were kind of second best all day, and I know that Coach Andrew Webster afterwards said he's really proud of the effort and that, but I think we learned a lot more from that game than we did the first game, and that, you know, this isn't a this isn't a great team. This isn't a Penrith Panthers. This isn't a Brisbane Broncos who are playing really well. This isn't... Oh, who's another good team at the moment? Um, the Parramatta Eels, Cronulla Sharks played bloody well on Friday night. But look, you know, the Warriors are, are stacked in that... Ninth to twelfth bracket, I think they're not the worst team in the competition. They're not the, the you know the third three or four worst teams. They're not the best team, and they're not kind of good enough right now to even be in the top eight teams. I don't think. I just think they are lacking, and especially we all know where it is. It's in the halves. It's where Sean Johnson is, and as fit as he might look and everything else, he still is not able to c- control a game of football, and that really does mm. cost them. No kicking game. Yeah. And just, you know, he's just, he's not the player that everyone wants him to be. That's all there is to it. I, I, yeah. I, I, now, I, I don't know how to say it any, any kind of clearer than that. All right. Now, look, the other story, and I don't know if it's a sports story or not. Have you been approached by the BBC to fill in on Match of the Day as no one else will take that gig? Yeah, what about After that After what story? Gary yeah. Lineker said something, he gets suspended. And then the other coaches say, well, he's a, he should be able to say what he likes about what he wants. Off, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a fascinating topic. This because it's simply, uh, and if you don't know it, people, what it is is that Gary Lineker, who's one of the you know the biggest football stars when he had boots on for England, I think he was their second or third top scorer. Um, he then has carved out a very successful post football career, being an analyst, um, and he he works across many many mediums actually, but the BBC's his big one, and he does uh, pre and post match shows every weekend for the Premier League. And he tweeted out uh, something about the government's immigration policy where I think that the said Prime that was Minister, like Nazi Germany, a little bit like yeah, well, Na- Nazi Germany. You know, what Germany, they're doing yeah. is, they, is they're denying, you know, they've got a real problem in England at the moment of queue jumpers. And, you know, for whatever reason, yeah. for whatever reason, and these are, these are people who are desperate to leave wherever they are, but they are queue jumpers. Yeah. They're jumping in boats and they're crossing the channel and they're expecting to land on a beach and walk on there. And, and they're saying they're going to turn them around. Okay, so that's the issue. They're saying they're going to turn them around. So that's the issue, yeah. yeah. So he so he so yeah. he said you know he said it's inhumane and it's cruel and that you know you you know, you, you are picking on 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 people who are absolutely desperate and he said using language akin to 1930s Nazi Germany and so because the BBC is owned by the government of course the government then smacks the BBC look it's the chain of command isn't it boss yells at guy guy comes home his argument with wife wife yells at kids kids kick kick dog and, and this is exactly yeah. what's happened here and so dog you know somebody's postman. yelled at the guy from the BBC yeah that's it and so the BBC you know eventually ban him but you know people power so all of the other presenters and they're all big name footballers the Alan Shearers your Ian Wrights all of these guys have just withdrawn as well pulled their labour out now Lineker's on a contract with the BBC of about one and a half million quid a year so that's about three million bucks nice. so I think that this will be resolved um, and, it, and it will be resolved amicably <coughs> because it's a bad look for the BBC I mean okay Sean you know you're in a position like this as well you trust us all to have social media accounts there are going to be three times three million pounds a year buddy <laughs> Well, okay, but I don't I really like go, to eh? disclose my income, go, especially eh? with a young man like Ben sitting there. I mean, he gets very oh, jealous, right, but okay. he knows that us presenters get paid nine times what the minions get paid yeah, to yeah. push the buttons. But, hey, you know, <laughs> sorry, Ben, he, but I that's just, just look at that. Sorry, Ben said, no, I think that I think that signal was you get paid twice as much, Martin. Was that oh. there, the two-finger <laughs> signal, wasn't it? That was what he was giving me there. Um <laughs> But look, you know, um, they, you know, and this, and and we saw this. You know, we've got a parallel going on in New Zealand because Steve, my brilliant career, Mahari, does it, and yet he doesn't get sanctioned for it. Yet the yeah. bloke from the hospital board did it, and he gets sanctioned for it. So, you know, there's this is an issue. All businesses, all countries, everywhere that. Do you let your employees have carte blanche license to do whatever they want on their own social media? 
Yeah, well, oh, just what I the say is you, do is just start uh, using uh, my we've... other account, Kylie Bunny Thirteen. I'm a lesbian virgin yeah. selling my virginity, Sean. There's a we do have one. a policy on this, which you may not have read, and that is you can say anything you want, but I don't want you to talk about other people you work with in a disparaging you way or say disparaging. Policy. Good God, everyone at the platform, put your hand up if you've read Sean's thirty-page policy. Yeah. No one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and see, Ben's you're a bloody one copy. I'm going to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I think it is a really interesting story, but fundamentally the BBC don't know what to do. They, they've had to cancel match of the day or something. There are no post-match no, interviews. They the pro- yeah, yeah, yeah they cancel at. the programmes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they cancel those yeah. programs. Yeah, watch this space. This will, this will be unfolding all week. So yeah, so there's a hell of a lot of sport. Plus, we've got another cricket test today, believe it or not. And it's oh, day five Lord. against Sri Lanka. So, so this is just wraps it up nicely with the bow. Uh, we're twenty eight for one, needing about another two hundred and thirty something runs. And we, you know, on a on a pitch that they say is doing things with ball, and so that will unfold throughout the afternoon. It could be a finish akin to what we saw at the Basin Reserve a couple of weeks ago. All of oh, that. Oh, good Lord. All of that, and, yeah. and I've actually left What have you got on out, this mate. afternoon, Marty? What have you got on this well, we afternoon? Cover, yeah, we cover all of that. Justin Marshall will be talking about the rugby. There's no one better because to explain what the heck went on in Laotoka for the Crusaders. We'll also obviously be talking about what's going on in the Northern Hemisphere because if France play like that, my God, this is the great thing about the French is that they play like that and then the next week they, they play like yeah, Italy, yeah, so you don't know. <laughs> Uh, we'll also be talking about the breakers, obviously. We'll do the motorsport with SVG, the Warriors. We'll cover it all, mate. We'll cover the gamut. Bloody good. Thank you, Martin. Always good to catch up. That is Martin Devlin. It's only sport one till four this afternoon. And can I tell you just a little, we're going to look and use iOS as a little bit of an experiment to spread our social media reach. We're going to look at some other channels and podcast channels. Uh, and we're going to, Marty can be the uh, the sort of pioneer, the groundbreaker through the ice flow. Um, we're going to push because there's so much good stuff that you guys aren't reading enough from Marty's show and we are going to get into that and give that a bit of a pump, a bit of a plunket pump in the next uh, few weeks, oh, which is Jesus, uh, great I think stuff. it's the last thing anyone needs or wants is a plunket pump, don't they? Come on. I mean, that's just completely out of order. That is. <laughs> you see, read God the policy. All I'm here. saying right read now, the- <laughs> you need to read the policy, okay? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mandatory oh, it's plunket taken- pump in the policy. <laughs>